You so proud you think you're the only man on earth can hear the voice of God? No, doctor. I respect your beliefs, but you can't let the child suffer because of them. I don't aim to see that little girl die. Then there'll be blood spilled. Dad could go back with you. He's my son. I can show you how to do it. Well, then why not you do it? Pa says I can only help. You have to cut. It's not God's will not to cut somebody open! Hank, I'll go ahead and shoot. Why don't you get it over with? With the help of God and this mountain man and the hands of my eldest son, my little boy and my little girl will grow up in the promised land. And in the eyes of a woman meant for me, I have a dream where the sun goes down. The Willamette Valley's calling me, cause I'm Oregon bound. Oh, I'm Oregon bound, yes I'm Oregon We're making a quilt, and I... I'm obliged to you for teaching her, ma'am. But quilts can wait. Learning the Lord's Word can't. Yes, but don't you think it's good that she spends time with Rachel? I think with her mother gone, it's more important she understands the teaching of our faith. Jenny, you'll come down now and write with me. Mr. Hancock, couldn't she stay until the first rest? Please, Pa. I'll do Bible studies extra hard tonight. All right. Just until the first rest. Hey, up you Nothing go. Good. I can manage. Touch the reins. I remember. Just until the first stop. More day easy going. We ought to be in mining country. So we can stop and pick up a few nuggets. Yep. Pick these. Special for you. Well, thank you, Rachel. Well, I think they're both beautiful, just like you two girls. Some of yours got a little bunch in. <laughs> I tell you what, we'll put the two bunches together, and that way we'll have one big one we can all enjoy. Here, Rachel. Just so Calico knows she's not forgotten, huh?
Jenny. Horses broke. She got thrown awful bad. How is she? By the grace of God, alive. Hey, Luther, get some blankets ready. We'll put her in the back of the wagon. No! What? I'll attend to my child myself. Just want to help you. She won't need it. The Lord will take care of her. Can't walk up yet. I got these two feather pillows and a soft comforter. When we camp, I'll take them around. Margaret Hancock made a pretty plane. He don't want our help. Heaven, look. Poor fellow thought he could take it all the way west. Finally give up. Looks sad to leave it. Sad thing is he thought he could take it all with him. You only take what you wear or what you can eat, what you can plant once you get there. Maybe that's sad, too. Next stop, we'll try and get this wagon to yours, see? to make her more comfortable. How is she? She just woke up. I think she's going to be fine. Could I see her, please? You see, I feel responsible. I'm... I don't think that's wise, but I'll tell her you asked for her. And I thank you for these. She'll rest easier for having them. If there's anything I can do, you let me know. You could join me in prayer. Good night. Good night. Nobody even knew his wife was sick. One day, he just announced she was dead of fever and buried her. Judge from the doctors I see, wouldn't done him no good anyway. Bleeding people, leeches, and all that stuff. Never seen one of them yet. Had any medicine to him, but ain't good. Guess what, Meg? We got a surprise for you. Surprise? Yeah, come on, see. Come on. Good evening, ma'am. Oh, Evan. Oh, Evan, thank you. Mm. Oh, it's beautiful. I figure we all do some music tonight. Well, you can play, can't you? I mean, now that we lugged it all the way down. Of course you can. Can't you? But it's so beautiful. Who is it? Someone who means well.
been disturbing her. I'm grateful your thoughts are with Jenny. But your music's taking her mind away from praying. We kind of figured the music would take her mind off the thing. God will see to Jenny's pain. Oh. Jenny. She's been moaning there like that for the last half hour. Uh, Mr. Hancock, I think it's Captain of this train. I'd just like to see what's ailing her. For I've tried to make it plain. Uh, I'll attend to Jenny in my own way. I'm uh, talking about attending. Talking about just looking at her. So she won't die. So we know what's wrong. Not like your wife. Shut up! May I see you? I reckon you're entitled to see her, but no more. Sorry, Miss. Hey, Jenny. Come see how you feel. It's a terrible hurt, Mr. Thorpe. Well, you hit the ground terrible hard. Can, can you show me where it hurts? I sighed. And if I try to breathe, it feels hot. Worse every time I breathe. And when I do it... <laughs> I said you could look at her, not administer to her. I'm sorry if I hurt you, but I've got to find out exactly where it's bad. Thorpe, did you hear me? Yes, I heard you. I'm trying to find out what's wrong. No more. How is she, Evan? Well, look at her. She's burning up with fever. <clears throat> the hurt seems to be right in there. Listen, Luther says there's a line in camp up ahead. Maybe they have a doctor. No doctor. Oh, Hancock, I respect your beliefs, but you can't let the child suffer because of them. Jenny, if we can find a doctor, would you like us to bring him to you? That's enough, both of you. I'll ask you to leave my tent. Yes, that's your right, Mr. Hancock. Same as it was a couple of months ago with your wife. It was my wife, and it is my daughter. Can't I say nothing to you? Just think about it, Doctor. No! What about my question? I'm waiting for my answer. I'll speak for Jenny. Why don't we just see what she has to say? Speak your mind, Jenny. Don't be afraid. But I am afraid. I'm afraid I'm going to die like Ma. But you won't die, child. Not if you believe in the power of God. Ma believed. I saw him nail her in that box and put her in the ground. I don't want to die. Let me, Margaret, get me a doctor. That's blasphemy, and you led the child to it. Well, that's what she wants. I'll do my best. Thorpe, get out of my tent. I'm going. You just hold tight, Jenny. We'll do all we can. That's a promise. Please don't be angry. It's not your fault, child. If I'd have raised you to be a better Christian, you'd have had more faith and resisted temptation. I can't help it, Pa. I'm scared. I don't want to die. Then pray. Ma's gone and she died. Nobody's good her Ma was. Believe. Believe with me. But I don't believe. I'm too scared. Pa, please don't let me die. I love you, child. Whatever I do, whatever I'm forced to do, understand that. Oh, is she? Dying like a mom. Oh, I don't know. She's mighty sick. What are you people doing here? Get away from my cat. I'll take care of my child in my own way. Like the way you took care of your wife. I helped dig a grave, remember? You're no Christian, Mr. Hancock. You're a murderer. All right, now that's enough of that kind of talk around here. Maybe we couldn't save your wife. But you're crazy to think of we'll stand by this time. My wife put her life in God's hands, and Jenny will do the same. His wife was too sweet to speak her mind. I heard her mom. What do you know? It's there. my child! Stop it! Stop Stop it. it. Stop it. I'll go back to your wagon. 
Plum disgusted with you, Mac. Oh, yeah, yeah. With a lot of us that love that little girl. And she ain't gonna die without us putting up a fight. I can't understand a fellow can believe in something that can cost his little girl her life. Listen, this mining camp. You figure they got a doctor. We heard this one there a couple of seasons ago. If it ain't blown away by now. Only one way to find out, I'm going. Now, wait a minute. You go, who'll keep these buzzards in line? I'll go. You gonna leave now? No, I can make it in a day and a half. If I don't sleep and take two horses. Hey, listen, you better leave me some kind of a map, just in case. No, you won't need one. Just head north for about 75 miles. You come to Big Mountain. Be some wagon tracks there. Just follow them. They take your eyes from mine. I'll see you. See you. What are you doing with my team? Look like I'm doing. I'm hitching them up. We're moving out. In the middle of the night? That's right. Luke is going to head to that mining camp. For a doctor? That's right. Figure the closer we get to him, the better. Go up. Let go of my team. Mister, I want to tell you something. I'm captain of this train. When I say we move out, we move out. Pulling out won't do you any good. There's no way I'll let a doctor touch her. Now listen to your beliefs when Luther gets back with the doctor. Excuse me. Jenny, can you hear me? Is that you, Mr. Thorpe? Do you think it would hurt too bad if we moved you from here to the wagon and made the wagon go ahead real slow? hurts so fierce, I don't know. Well, see, Luther's gone for that doctor that you call for, and we want to get closer to him. Oh, yes, yes. I'll try. I'll be all right. You got anything to say against that? Maybe you can hitch up my team, but you can't force me to drive. Well, I was figuring on that. I'm driving your team. You're riding in the back of the rig with Jenny. Now, Mr. Hancock, the going gets too rough, the little girl. All you gotta do is tell me. Thorpe. You really don't understand me, do you? No. I got my beliefs, and you can't shake me from them. But whatever made you think I was a cruel man? Where's the doc? We ain't got no doc. Well, I heard you had one a couple of seasons ago. Could be. Only been here a year. You don't look like no miner to me. Not. I'm the cook. You heard him say we ain't got no doctor. I'd advise you be on your way. Now, don't get your belt in a knot now. I'm no robber of a scout wagon train. Burton sent you, didn't he? I don't know him by name, Burton. You don't know a mine super named Burton? I told you I didn't know anybody named Burton. Well, it goes through you same. Doesn't matter who you are. Look here, mister, we got this little girl that's sick, and I come here... I'm gonna... Clem don't like strangers. He'll kill you as soon as he'll rub his nose. I'm gonna count to five. <laughs> Slim don't count so well, either. Why? He's liable to lose track by five. Two. Harper, Pa says he needs more sheets for bandages. Hal, get them. Hey, boy, who's your pa? Uh, Pete Cooley, he's a doctor here. And I'm aiming to see him. 
I got a rush. Don't change nothing. Four. You forgot three. You want to talk about this? Sure. Step down. Leave him in the mine office. At least till we get this mess cleaned up. Just me. Could I see Jenny, please? I bring her this. Please, I'll be real quiet. Look, I finished it. Just so you could have it. Margaret helped me do the quarters, but I did the rest. Just for you. I hope you like it. Jenny? Jenny? Can you hear me? Jenny? I think you better go. I was there. And when she tried to breathe, it made an awful sound. I know. Daddy can't do nothing until Luther gets back with the doctor. She really is my friend, Pa. And I wanted to tell her that I was sorry that I didn't want her to ride in Margaret's wagon or help make the quilt, but she just couldn't hear me. Well, she knows you feel that way, I'm sure of that. But if she dies, I won't be able to tell her. Please don't let her die, Pa, please. Looking for maybe five wagons need new rims. You fixing to rest for a while? No. If Luther brings back help, we'll lay over for a day or so. Right now, don't waste time. Well, there's always repairs that he's doing. I know. Figured Luther would be back by now. So did I. Well, if you need help with that stiff-necked handcuff, you let me know. Yeah, I appreciate it. Let me handle that fella. Well, just the same. Evan, it don't sit well with a lot of us letting that little girl suffer so. I know that, Mike, don't I? Morgan. Listen to you. I gotta find that mining camp. Maybe Luther couldn't find a doctor. What worries me is why isn't Luther back here? Evan, he can take care of him. Well, it ain't hot like him to get lost when there's something important going on, so I'm gone. Well, I'll watch the children. Now, listen, use that good woman common sense of yours and remind these folks that Hancock will turn a gun on. Don't let them do nothing until we get back. Sweet. You want it? 
Jenny'd want you to have it. Not very hungry. When's the last time you ate something? Shame for it to go to waste. You're a good friend, Rachel. I'm sitting here keeping vigil. I guess it don't matter what I say or do. You don't like me much, do you? No, not if you're gonna let Jenny die. I can't blame you for feeling that way. If I was in your shoes, I expect I'd feel the same. Mean old man thumbing through the Bible instead of helping his daughter. There was a time when I was younger, I, I never thought about God one way or the other. I sure never looked to him to solve any problems, that's for sure. I always relied on my rifle or my fist to settle things. Man comes to the Lord late like that. He's got to believe extra hard to make up for all those wasted years. I don't want Jenny to die either. But if I let a doctor cut her open, I'll be leaving a path I promise to follow for the rest of my life. Gentlemen, Oof. listen, my name's Evan Thorpe. I come from a wagon train a couple of days back there. Looking for supplies, we ain't got. No, no, any. no. I'm looking for a doctor, real bad. We ain't got one of those neither. Oh, uh, what about a scout? Uh, maybe come through here sometime yesterday. Fell about my size, uh, dressed in buckskins, yellow hair. You be the only stranger in here in weeks. Goodbye, Mister. <laughs> well, what about you? You see this scout I was talking about? I ain't seen nobody but you. Now get. Kind of touchy for a man who ain't got nothing to hide, ain't <laughs> He was born touchy, mister. <laughs> Real funny. Much obliged to you. <laughs> I suppose you fellas seen these before, neither. Hey, you Doc Cooley? See to that man over there. I need every pair of hands I can get. Now move, please. No, you don't understand. We come from this wagon train. We come to fetch you. He's hurt bad. Head's busted open. Millie, get another blanket, Tad. I need you. This leg's got to come off. Get some whiskey. Easy now. Easy. Sir, see, we got this little girl. She's only about eight years old. You're crazy. You see what I got here? Two men dead. God knows how many injured. She's going to die for sure, unless we get help. Yeah, we ain't got time to find nobody else. You got to come with us, Doc. Tad. Now you go get the saw in the boiling water, bring it to me. Frank, hold him, will you? She's got this bad pain. When, when you touch her here, she screams. It's no use, mister. It's no use. There are men still down in the mine. No telling how many days before I can leave here. Days? We ain't even got hours, Doc. You got any idea about taking the Doc with you? Forget it. Tad could go back with you. Well, the boy? 
He's my son. He knows a lot. Been working with me regular the last couple of years. We gotta have a doctor. Yeah, he ain't no doctor. Neither am I. I worked for an army surgeon during the war. When he got killed, I took over. Well, tell us what it is. I told you, this pain. She's got it right here. She screams if you touch her. She had an accident. She got thrown off this runaway wagon. Could be a rib pressing against the lung. Well, what's that mean? Open her up? Sure would. Well, can he do that? No, but he can tell you how to do it. Well, that ain't good enough. You better take him and be grateful, mister. That's really more than I should do for you. Millie, the bandages. Then when I was eight, Pa got mustered out of the army. He said he was as good as any doctor he'd served with, so he hung out a shingle. Ma died of fever and we left Texas. Pa wanted to try Oregon, but... Don't you ever shut up, boy. Nobody to talk to back at the mine, except Pa. And he's heard all this. You ain't said a word since he started. He's doing fine. Is that right? He's worse than a train load of immigrants. Hey, boy. Better stop feeding your face and get some rest. Another couple of hours, the moon will be up, we'll be riding. Aren't you two about worn out? I mean, all the way to camp and back without stopping? Wore out when we get back to camp, I'll tell you. I keep thinking about it, I won't be getting on that horse. Well, you had enough strength to finish off Slim, and he's a mean one. He'd have shot you for sure. Yeah, I kind of got that feeling. You want to tell me something? Why do Slim and them others lie to us? Why do they say there weren't no doctor? But don't get him started again. The mine we've been working's about played out. But as long as the company gets something out of it, they'll keep us open. What, looking for another vein or what? Yeah, the men wanted to push the main shaft back into the mountain. But the company engineer said not to, said it'd collapse. Well, it did collapse. Yeah, and if the company finds out, they'll close us down for sure. You mean Slim would kill for that? That's all he's got. But you two are from the mine company. Come to spy. The little girl we're talking about, her pa, she's all he's got, too, and he's willing to kill for it. What? Kill us? For trying to save her life? Is he crazy? No, I think we are. One fellow wants to kill us for fetching a doctor. Another fellow wants to kill us for bringing one. All we stuck with is a kid probably ain't got a lick of sense. All right, maybe I am just a kid. That doesn't give you call to say before I've had a chance. Ain't talking about a chance. Talking about a little girl's life. Now shut up, both of you. Close your eyes and get some sleep. I read in a medical magazine once that a man needs but four hours sleep, and a grown boy almost nine. Need a hand? I don't think so. Just how long you been helping you? Three, three years. Well, you listen. He told me what's wrong with Jenny might be a, a rib pressed against a lung. Now, did you ever see him do an operation like that? Sure. McGregor fell down a shaft. He had that. And your pa fixed it? Yeah, he fixed it. All he had to do was to pull back the rib so it didn't press on the lung. It ain't too difficult. I'm sure glad you see it done. Yeah. Pa gave me this medical book and some instruments. I can show you how to do it. Well, then why don't you do it? Pa says I can only help. You have to cut. Ready? Huh? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. I got, I got to stand by my faith, Darby. Else all I've lived for these last years don't mean nothing. You was in there when you heard Jenny ask for help. Now, can't you respect her wishes? I know it's easier to be like everybody else. Do things they want you to do. Make you happy, Thorpe, your daughter, everybody on this train. Then why can't you? Because sometimes the easy road ain't the right one. Your little girl don't want to die. What's your answer to that? My face being tested. To see if I'm strong enough to believe what I say I believe. There ain't any law under God that says a little child has to die needless. That's a man's law. That's yours. Now, Hancock, I don't want to do this without your say-so. But either way, I don't aim to see that little girl die. Then there'll be blood spilled. Because I aim to use this on anyone comes near my little girl. Did your pa let you help with the operations? I mean, cutting people open and everything? Well, sure. There's no one else at the camp that can help him. Well, William, your father uses you to help him. That's what Chad's father does. Son, come here. 
Why don't you go and get Rachel? She's playing off somewhere, and you take her to our wagon, and you keep her there. All right. Cat, uh, give me that there medical book. Let me see them pictures again. Margaret, uh, bandages and all them things all right? Don't you worry. They'll be ready when you need them. All right. <clears throat> well, now, uh, uh, Cat, what do you want to do this? Well, in the tent, if it's clean, the less we move it, the better. Also need a good, strong light if you can find one. Your Hancock. Truthful with you. I ain't got a doctor. Just got me. This doctor's boy here. We're gonna try and save Jenny. Oh. I haven't aimed this at anyone in a long time. But God forgive me, I ain't forgot how to bring a man down. But now which part of the Bible are you going by? Love thy neighbor? Thou shalt not kill? Don't try to move me by quoting a word. Even the devil can quote scripture. I listen to the voice of the Lord. You so proud you think you're the only man on earth can hear the voice of God? No, no. Get out of here. Get him all out of here. All right, move. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Get out of here. I remember me the story of Abraham. Now. God told Abraham to put his son on the altar and kill him to prove he loved God. But God stopped him. Because no man has the right to kill a child just to prove he loves the Lord. It was God who stopped Abraham's knife, and if God wants Jenny to live, he'll save her. How? How? Exactly by what means? The same way he did last time. By what means? By letting her live. When by all rights, she was supposed to die. If an angel come down to earth, you know, with snowy white wings like you see in them Bible pictures, and he wanted to save Jenny. Would you shoot him? Don't mock me, Thorpe. I ain't mocking you, I'm asking you. Would you shoot the angel? I don't oppose God's will any way it comes. Supposing God sent me and this here boy to try and save Jenny. You gonna refuse our help because we ain't got wings? There wasn't no help the last time. Hancock, look around you. We're in the wilderness. We're 500 miles from any real settlement. Don't you think it was a miracle? A miracle that me and Luther found this boy who knows about doctrine? You better stay put. Stay put! And God, go ahead and shoot. Why don't you get it over with? It's not God's will not to cut somebody open! We're here to save Jenny. Stay put. I'll shoot. Go ahead and shoot. You know, I don't expect you to think that a boy like this and me add up to any kind of miracle. But you can't shoot. God, Evan, don't. There's too much of the Christian man in you to shoot any man who's trying to help a child, especially a little girl that you love so much. Hancock? No. God, please. God, God, forgive me for being so weak. <sighs> you pray for me. Pray for the Lord to help me what I'm trying to do. Well, you better tie up those tent flaps. You won't know on any dust in here. Yeah, yeah. It's hot as blazes in here with these lamps going, too. All right. <sighs> Ain't gonna use it, I want to cut this nightgown off. Too scared to move her. Uh, get some whiskey. What for? I just gave her a laudanum. I know that. How long will that keep her out? I'm not too sure. Kept the horse out for an hour. Let's pray to God that's so. All right. Now, put some whiskey on a rag and wipe aside real gentle. Now, 
pour some on my hands. Breathing faster and shallower, too. This ain't nothing like the pitcher. Just keep going, you're doing fine. That's the cleanest cut I've ever seen. Yeah, that's the one. It's all mashed against the lung. What do I do now? Just reach in there and pull it back as good as you can. Just don't break anything. I can't hold it. Try the probe. The what? The probe. It's too sharp. It'll, it'll go into a lung. What about a button hook? A button hook, it'll slip right over, I think. I think Jenny's mother kept one in this basket here. Here. Maybe it'll work. Put it in whiskey. All right. to God now, ain't it? Thorpe, I'm obliged for what you've done. It's against my faith. But I know you meant what was best for Jenny. My pa said that Pa says that when most grown men see their first operation, they'd faint. He'd be right proud of you. Don't talk too soon, son. Well, you did better with Jenny than he did with Mr. McGregor. What happened to Mr. McGregor? He died. Happens sometimes. Oh, my Lord. I'm hungry. I'm gonna get a drink. Evan? I think I'm going to call you Dr. Thorpe. Next time I need a leg amputated, I'll know who to go to. Just give me the jug. Oh, Bible something, Dr. Thorpe. Hey, don't hog the whiskey. <laughs> I need it more than you do. 
you realize something? Ain't as simple as that doctor said. Little girl could have died under me. Yeah. But she didn't. Thanks to you. Yeah, but it ain't over yet. We gotta sit and wait it out. And that's the hard part. exactly what you're doing here. Don't you know it's time for bed unless you're going to turn into a... Night Owl. How'd you know I was going to say that? Because you always do. Oh. Pop, I don't want to go to bed now. Can I just stay up a little later? Ain't it getting too cold out here? Tell you what we're going to do. And then we're going to have us a nighttime story. How's that? Oh, such a big girl. Huh. She called out my name, just like she did the last time. I think she's going to be fine. Thank God. Thank you. Huh? Can I go see Jim? She's feeling stronger by the minute. If that ain't a miracle, it'll do the one comes along. Let's see how good you are, Will. Okay, move me up! Valleys calling me, oh, I'm Oregon bound. 